Eucharistic miracles are God's extraordinary interventions that are intended to confirm faith in the presence of the Lord's body and blood in the Eucharist. The substance of bread becomes the body of Christ, and the substance of wine becomes his blood, with the words of consecration, this is my body. This is my blood. This amazing transformation is known as transubstantiation. The Lord performs these miracles to give us a clear and obvious indication that the Eucharist contains the actual body and blood of the Lord. Three Eucharistic miracles that happened in 1992, 1994, and 1996 all involved the parish of St. Mary in Buenos Aires. During the preparation of the Eucharistic Reserve in 1992, following the Mass on Friday May 1, a Eucharistic minister discovered some consecrated host pieces on the corporal. The priest had them placed in a vessel of water, which was then placed in the tabernacle to wait for them to dissolve, as the church instructs to be done in such circumstances. When several priests checked it the next day, they discovered that nothing had changed. On Friday May 8, seven days later, they opened the tabernacle and saw that the host fragments had turned a reddish color that resembled blood. Several small drops of blood were noticed on the patterns with which the priests distributed communion the following Sunday May 10, during the two evening masses. On July 24, 1994, during the children's mass, while the Eucharistic minister was taking photos from the tabernacle, he noticed a drop of blood running along its side. On August 15, 1996, during the Mass of the Assumption of the Most Holy Virgin, a consecrated host that had fallen to the ground during communion distribution had to be placed in a vessel of water again so that it would dissolve. A Eucharistic minister opened the tabernacle a few days later, on August 26, and saw that the host had transformed into blood. On August 15, 1996, a faithful received the consecrated host in his hands to take communion but he let it fall to the ground accidentally and decided not to pick it up because it appeared dirty to him. Another, more pious person, noticed what had happened, picked it up and separated it, immediately informing the priest. Following the church's directives in these circumstances, the priest placed the host in a vessel full of water and placed it in the tabernacle, waiting for it to dissolve. On August 26, the tabernacle was reopened to retrieve the vessel containing the fallen host, and it was discovered that it had not been dissolved and had several reddish stains that grew larger by the day. The parish priests immediately informed the Archbishop of Buenos Aires of what had happened. The current Pope Francis, who was the Archbishop of Buenos Aires at the time, contacted Professor Ricardo Castan Gomez to examine the miracle. Professor traveled to Buenos Aires on October 6, 1999, to speak with the five priests who had witnessed the miracles. There are various types of white blood cells in blood, each with its own set of characteristics. In the first miracle, the priests asked one of their lady parishioners who was a chemist to examine the bleeding host. She discovered it was human blood and that it contained the complete leukocyte formula. She was taken aback when she noticed that the white blood cells were active. The lady doctor, on the other hand, was unable to perform the genetic examination because it was difficult to perform at the time. Professor brought a sample from the two blood hosts. On October 21, he went to San Francisco's Forensic Analytical Genetics Laboratory which was supposed to analyze the samples he had brought. On January 28, 2000, they discovered some fragments of human DNA in the samples. The human genetic code was found in human blood. Dr. Robert Lawrence, a well-known legal histopathologist and tissue expert, took part in this study. Dr. Lawrence examined the samples and discovered human skin and white blood cells. It is important to note that when blood is drawn from a person, the white blood cells disintegrate after 15 minutes. Thus, it is completely inexplicable from a scientific standpoint that white blood cells were discovered in the 1996 sample in 2005. This demonstrates that the heart was actively beating at the time the samples were taken. Professor Robert Lawrence confirmed that, in light of the new findings, one could conclude that the sample could be tissue from an inflamed heart. The studies had thus demonstrated that these tissues belonged to an inflamed heart, implying that the person to whom they belonged had suffered greatly. Professor went to the greatest expert in cardiac pathologies and forensic medicine of the heart, Professor Frederick Zugabi of New York, at Columbia University on March 2, 2004. The professor, on the other hand, had no idea that the sample I had brought him was from a consecrated host. After his investigation, Professor Zugabi said, is the muscle of the heart, the myocardium, specifically the left ventricle, and he confirmed that my patient had suffered greatly. Because of the patient's thrombi, there were times when he was unable to breathe, oxygen was unable to reach him, and he had to work hard and endure great suffering with each aspiration. They most likely struck him in the chest area. Additionally, the heart was dynamically active, alive, in the sample. 
Since only the blood carries white blood cells, we believe that the presence of some intact white blood cells indicates that the blood was pulsing in the sample. When told that it came from a consecrated host, Professor exclaimed, I don't believe it. The myocardium is the muscle that powers the entire heart and our bodies. In this miracle, the Lord wanted to show us his myocardium, the muscle that gives life to the entire heart, just as the Eucharist does for the church. What's the significance of the left ventricle? Because it is the source of purified blood, and Jesus is the one who cleanses his church of her sins.